My name is Nicole Elmer, and I am the director and one of the executive producers of this film. I'm also one of the co-writers of the film. My name is Jorge Cermini. I am one of the producers of the film. I'm also a co-writer, and I play the main character in the film. The story came about in a, an interesting way. Um, Jorge and I had been tossing around a lot of different ideas. It seemed that at the end it was mashing different characters from different ideas, different stories that we had. And they were all really, really expensive to pull off. Considering the money we had access to, I mean, basically we had bounced around all these different ideas, realized they were all too expensive to pull off, and then my great aunt died in South Texas. And we went to the funeral. And on our way back, we stopped at one of the very few places to eat in Valfurius. The, the sub subway, yeah. The subway. And I proposed to Jorge that, why don't we shoot this in Puerto Rico? Yeah, and it's curious because uh, a few months before, maybe, we were in Puerto Rico in a friend of ours, with a friend of ours who lives there. And he had jokingly said, why don't you shoot a film here? We didn't take him seriously, of course. But when we kind of looked at the resources that Jorge had access to as far as, you know, um, his family support, his friends, the people he knew down there in the industry, um, it was going to be our, our most affordable idea. And it was a beautiful location, too. Yeah, we just called him from the car and said, hey, uh, can I shoot a film in, in Culebra? He said, yeah. And I don't think he knew what he was getting himself into, of course. But it was pretty much that simple. And then, of course, we started working on it for months. Yeah, we had about eight months of, of really crazy pre-production because we had to shoot during the hurricane, hurricane season. That was the only time we could shoot because uh, there's very, very little tourism going on and, and um, things are cheaper, there's less people. It was, it was good for us. We restricted ourselves to some parameters of the, the script that would make it more accessible in the sense that we kept the cast very small. Um, we used local um, performers or people that actually lived there and kept their names um, as they were in real life because we felt that that was a reality we wanted to, to have transfer through the film. We also used some, some serious actors like Gil René, the, the man who begs for his mother's life. He's actually a very important Puerto Rican actor who I happened to pretty much grow up in as an artist and I offered him the role. He, he read the script, he made a lot of comments and ultimately he showed up and did an amazing job in his scene, possibly the, the coolest scene in the film. Yeah, we also had um, Hurricane come through, Hurricane Omar. Right, and we started production, shut us down for two days. Um, the hurricane actually never reached us, but it was scary. We had to stop a lot of work to, to prepare for a hurricane that doesn't come. So yeah, when we, we, so we shot for six weeks, came back in December of 2008, and began reviewing footage while also pre-producing for the scenes that we needed to shoot in Austin that we didn't want to shoot in Puerto Rico. And that's when we began the construction of the lighthouse. But yeah, that was a, that was another endeavor. We had to raise money for that, build the set. We hired a, a great designer, Marco Noyola, who who helped us and guided us, me and Nicole, to to build that lighthouse. And it was just a matter of me going to the set all day and working on stuff that he let me know what to do. And he came in and did a bunch of stuff. It, at the end it looked amazing. We still have not had one person point out that it's a set. Mostly the question is how did you get Danny Trejo to Puerto Rico to do that scene? How, which is a great to hear because they don't realize it's a set in Austin. After we shot the scene with uh, Trejo in July of um, 2010, we began to tighten up the cut and screen it for different groups and get more feedback, which led us to decide we needed one more scene, which is the flashback scene when Diego has the gun and is shooting, trying to shoot the shadow. And so we shot that in January of 2011 and officially wrapped the film. So it's been a long process. 
Well, an interesting thing that happened, too, is that we began to include very old footage of the daughter, Amalia Sermini, who's actually Amalia Sermini, and to include uh, high eight footage of her uh, within the film, which became a totally unexpected editing choice. But we felt that using that real footage actually um, strengthen the explanation of the relationship between Diego as a father and his daughter. Yeah, it's actually real footage from my life with my daughter. It's kind of strange because you see her grow up in the film all the way till she's a teenager. You shoot throughout your life thinking, I'm just going to save this and show it to her and it's in a film now, uh, unrelated to her real life, but it's just strange. Uh, one of the reactions that I got the other day was somebody saying that they actually, see, watching that in the context of the film, they assumed that it was my real daughter. So I'm wondering what real impression that left on them.